So here is a quick preview render um, with some glass uh, material, a real simple glass material applied to the glass sections here so we can get an idea of how the refraction is working uh, through the areas that are getting a little bit of faceting. You can see that we've got this nice edge here and uh, you know as we move through here even at the low resolution you can kind of see the uh, the effect that that has as you're looking through it's, it's a uh, nice interesting look there now we may want to do uh, decrease that a little bit or something for a finished render but that's uh, beyond the scope of this series so I just wanted to give you a quick look at how uh, this looks with some actual transparency on it so let's hop back over to the model tab now and we'll start creating the panels that will be the uh, you know the main exterior hull of the ship here and we're going to do this in a way that will allow us to uh, kind of start with uh, simple details and will give us some space to either put in additional stuff um, you know weapons um, housed underneath panels um, and things like that and then we'll also set up an area that uh, that will be set aside for um, the mounts to the uh, the engine pods and those we're going to do some mesh fusion work and there's going to be a difference between the sections that we're setting up with uh, mesh fusion in mind versus the sections that uh, we're just going to be creating panels by themselves. It's important to make that distinction. Uh, it's not a real difficult thing to have to switch back and forth, uh, but it is something to be aware of as you're uh, creating so that you know how to uh, work with both of them. So let's go ahead and maximize this view. And what I'm going to do is start just by taking out and uh, copying and pasting uh, pieces of the whole uh, to a new layer and then we will uh, work with those so I'm gonna get more than one piece at a time here so I'm gonna get um, you know this section here oops, these sections here up at the top left and right and then this uh, bottom one here now I want to work with pieces that are um, disconnected from each other uh, because that will allow me to have individual distinct elements inside of um, you know my newly placed whole panels so let's copy those uh, new mesh layer which we'll call panels and we'll paste those in and what I'm going to do is jump straight to subdividing those alright and we can go ahead and hide our hole for a moment here and what we'll do is we're going to do a couple of things here we're going to thicken these and then we're going to go in and add some edge weights so let's go down here to our surface and I'm going to set the level up to four and that will allow me to have various levels of sharpening so I can go to 40 percent which will give me fully sharp 30 percent mostly sharp and then 20 or 10 percent which is going to be just very subtle um, you know amounts of edges here so let's take these here and we'll go again to our uh, trusty thicken tool here I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to thicken these uh, outward so they're going away from the rest of the hole uh, that we're not eating up our interior space and I'm going to go kind of as 300 millimeters as my sort of default uh, level of thickness uh, it's fairly thick pieces of metal um, uh, that's uh, if you're if you're not in metric that's about 12 inches so that's a you know a pretty thick piece of metal some of them will be a little thinner some of them will be a little thicker depending on what we're doing with them alright so we're gonna select this loop here go to our boundary by control clicking on edges shift W and we're going to start with 30 percent weights here now we may want to increase those uh, but we'll start with 30 percent weights and then we're going to go back around to the corner pieces um, that ought to do it we'll add weight to those as well and I'll do the same thing down here on this uh, lower panel so we'll select the boundary weight and we'll just get these corners Let's make sure I get both of those and we'll add those weight in. Now this might be a part that I want to use for uh, kind of a door if uh, if we want to be able to have uh, an entrance for the you know into the crew area. Um, you know, that's something I want to leave open so I'm giving a separate uh, panel right there. And now I can also go through here you know to sections like this if I want um, or here get loops here and these ones I might want to wait at something like 20 percent uh, so we're still keeping kind of the uh, the faceted look where we get uh, the feeling of you know distinct hard edges but then we're still getting the nice uh, subtle rounding between them uh, we're getting all sorts of other stuff here that are uh, that are going to look better with our subdivision surfaces all right so let's hop back over to the hole and with this one I'm going to take a little strip back there uh, and this one here so again copy and paste thicken and we'll pull those out 
maybe I'll pull these ones out just a little bit more, so maybe 350, 360 millimeters, so that we have a little bit of a difference in depth, and that will give us a little bit uh, of more interesting surface on this part of the model. We'll press Q to drop our tool, we'll double click on those, Shift tab to subdivide them, and I'll select the loops around the edges. And we'll get the boundaries, and we'll weight the boundaries. And we'll go back in here, and now we're going to start to see uh, some of the issues that we have that we'll uh, need to address as we uh, as we go about this. You can see that these uh, panels are starting to peel away from each other, and this is something that we'll have to deal with uh, throughout. Um, you know the build here because uh, we want to make sure that everything looks as if it's uh, you know kind of tightly integrated and uh, it's one of the downsides of uh, this kind of a workflow is because we're going with something that has such a modular appearance to it we're going to have to make sure that we uh, take time to align things properly uh, because by default and just by nature the uh, the thicken tool is going to pull things um, up and straight towards the surface normals, which will make it a little bit, uh, a little bit of separation gap. So we want to make sure that we fix those, uh, and it will give us a, a better finished surface. So uh, let's fix that part there, and this part here. And the nice thing is, is this is fairly easy to correct. It's just a matter of uh, you know, taking the time to do so. And we may want to also go in and add some additional loop slices here. Now these don't have to be super tight, uh, but these in conjunction with um, the weights that we've added will help us to get really nice uh, crisp corners. Something like that. Actually before I do that I'm going to take these parts here and adjust them so that uh, we get a nice fit here. And we may have areas like this where we want to add in some extra edges as well. And these aren't going to affect really the look of, uh, of the panels themselves, but it's going to give us a little bit harder edges up around the corners here. Let's go through here also, make sure that I've got everything uh, set to 30. Looks like some of my edges had been set to 20% weight. And I want to make sure that I get those cleaned up. And then we will move forward. Yeah, so those are okay. Looks like we might have some back here at 20. Yep. All right, and once we've got those all ready, uh, we can you know move on to the next chunk. So we're gonna do a couple more pieces here, and then I'll stop and fast forward uh, to to having most of these panels created, so we can look where we'll go after we have uh, you know this bit done. So let's just go ahead, and again, I'm gonna make sure that I've got my yeah, it looks like my weight had been reset to 20% there. I want to make sure that those uh, get cleaned up nicely, and select this here get my boundary there we go give those a nice 20 percent weight a nice 30 percent weight there we go so now we're starting to get things that are sticking together nicely so we'll hop down to the hole here and you know we'll continue this process until we get uh you know kind of uh, a good uh you know a good representation of individual panels and chunks and pieces so i can make these you know fairly large here to start because it's pretty easy to go in and add some additional depth by making uh smaller ones after i've done this but i don't want to make them too small right at the beginning because it will cause a lot of cleanup work now i'm going to be using uh some textures and some other things when this is actually finished uh, in order to put things together and we're also going to add some detail meshes that will kind of attach these panels one to another but we want to make sure that we get enough room for you know, say if I wanted this panel to raise up so that I've got room for a missile rack or something, I want to make sure that I have the, the room to do that. So let's go ahead here and I want kind of this whole area here to be kind of one big piece um, that's going to kind of horseshoe around this. And this is going to be uh, kind of a landing foot that I want to extend. So let's start just by getting, let's get those pieces there, copy go in here and paste and you know uh, this is a real uh, kind of just do it a bit at a time kind of process uh, you might find things that you want to adjust as you keep working so I wanted to add an extra you know sharper edge right down through there so set that up to 30 
And yeah, so let's kind of continue on here. So I can take these ones, same as the last. So let's just select these. And I'm going to thicken these ones. I'm going to go back to the uh, to the 300 millimeter depth. So like that. And let's get these here too. Thicken 300 millimeters. And then we will just take all those guys and subdivide them. And then, you know, like just, just like before, it's just a matter of going through and adding in the weights where we need them in order to get these looking less like blobs and more like, you know, nice panels. All right, so the, the benefit of working in a kind of hardened, hard edge subdivision surface workflow is that we will get uh, individual panels that have a real nice amount of uh, kind of continuity. But at the same time, we can add in these edges really easily in order to, um, you know, give us a nice creased appearance. So this should work out pretty well. And let's go ahead and just sharpen up those and those. I think that works fairly well. Oops. And I'm going to add in another uh, sharp edge right here. So what I'm doing is it's some places here where I have uh, a seam between, say, this panel here on the top in the middle and this next open space where I'm going to have another panel. I'm adding in a sharper edge uh, through the adjacent panel so we get that feeling of, you know, that continuity of the, the semi-hardened edges. So let's go ahead and add in there too. And then we'll move down to the bottom here. And now I could leave this kind of rounded. And the nice thing about this too is that uh, you can decide to leave areas rounded uh, also as long as the adjacent panels are keeping the same kind of round to sharp ratios. And you can end up with some really interesting stuff here. So I'm actually going to uh, sharpen up both of these edges. But then I'm going to leave this front here round. And you'll see in a moment uh, as I go back in and get this piece right here, it's going to be kind of the, uh, you know, kind of like the landing gear foot thing that will extend down. Um, Let's go ahead and take this and paste it in there. So as I take this and uh, thicken it, you know, this one I'll make a little bit thicker. You know, maybe I'll go for, again, like the 360 uh, kind of range. Actually, let's go even a little bit thicker. This is supposed to be a landing foot, so I'll give it some real thickness there. So let's subdivide that. And now I'm going to uh, get this loop, and just like before, get the boundary and then weight the boundary. But I'm going to leave this front edge without the weighting and you can see we get a nice uh, kind of you know similarity between this rounded part here and this rounded part here so we we aren't stuck with just these sharp edges but we can do a lot of uh, kind of interesting stuff with this now however I do want this part here to not be round so I'm gonna weight this section and I'm also gonna weight uh, this one here and this one and there we go. So now I get a nice kind of mix of these faceted pieces and a little bit of a kind of a rounded front edge, which I kind of uh, like the look there. I think that's going to look uh, look really nice, a little bit of contrast uh, within this. So let's um, add in a little bit of a facet there. And I think the main area that I want the ship to land on is going to be that section right there. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to take and flatten it out and just pull it down just a little bit and then I'm going to add in an extra loop slice or a couple of loop slices through here just to give that a little bit of extra kind of umph on the sharpening. Alright, so let's just fill in a little bit more here before we uh, break off on this part. So let's see, I'm going to leave this back area here to kind of do a big arch. So let's copy this part, go in, paste, and same drill, thicken, and I'm going to do the same 300 millimeters, subdivide it, loop, boundary, weight, and sharpen up my corners. So let's get that one, that one, that one, and that one. And then here you can see I've got some areas where I'm attaching to an area that is weighted. So I'm going to make sure that I go in here and add in uh, similar amounts of weight to these adjacent, um, you know, sections so that you get the feeling that these 
are actually uh, you know uh, flush up against one another here so let's also get this part here and I'm gonna raise this up to give it a nice kind of straight continuous edge there so that those parts attach pretty well and since this is kind of a big long panel here I'm also gonna add an extra couple of loops through here just to help give that a little bit more rigidity and I think this part here I'm gonna want that as well all right so just a little bit of cleanup here and then we'll be you know good to uh, to continue on so let's take this pull it up and if we leave a little bit of kind of gap that's okay uh, because we're actually going to go back when we're finished with all of this work and we're going to uh, take and extract some additional stuff out of this whole bit here so we'll take areas that run in between the panels and we'll create an inward thick and some extra beams that will um, not only give us the you know the appearance of a nice skeletal structure underneath the panels but to also make sure that we can't like peek through holes and see into the interior of the ship and kind of ruin the idea that it's uh you know a, a strongly assembled uh, vessel all right so I'm gonna pause here and skip ahead to uh, to having the rest of this section built out and then we'll go ahead and we'll look at uh, how we're going to attach the drive pods back in this section so we'll look at uh, the, the main difference uh, when we're working with stuff that's going to be using mesh fusion as opposed to the parts that are just uh, you know simply attached to the ship like the stuff that we've done up here in the front so that does it for this one thanks and I will see you in the next one